I'm preaching a message this morning that um, might be troubling to some, but I make no apologies. I'm talking about Jesus Christ on the campaign trail. <laughs> For those of you who have been part of my Bible study on Wednesday night, understand quite well that I have said repeatedly that Jesus' death was the result of the collusion of the economic, religious, and political powers. You have heard me say over and over again that we ought not to just simplify the act. But we must understand quite well that what Jesus went through on Palm Sunday was a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We are dealing now with the, with the political season. Yeah, the two parties are moving towards Philadelphia and Ohio for their convention. Somebody has to be nominated. I don't want to use this pulpit to politicize this day, but Palm Sunday reminds me so much about like the campaign we have now. Because I believe, and I want you to walk gently with me, I believe that what Palm Sunday was about was Jesus going, thank you, Jesus going up to Jerusalem with the hope that he might win the nomination for his party to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I believe that's what it was all about. Now, we, we, it's, we might have a brokered convention in the Republican Party, Gary. <laughs> but <laughs> never before in the history of the American Party politics have we witnessed such vitriolic, nasty, vindictive, personal divisive, violent, intolerant, narrow-minded, nativist, vulgar, misogynistic, and racially bitter explosions in our country. As a Christian minister, I refuse to make public endorsement of either of, uh, members of either party. I refuse to politicize the pulpit, to engage in Partisan pa pa pandering. However, as a Christian minister, I am bound to speak to Mr. Trump today. Amen. Just as a Christian minister. And I would speak to Mr. Trump whether he was a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. Because if someone is running for the highest office and by God the highest office in the world... You can't alienate people. As someone who is running to be a leader in our world, you can't alienate the veterans. You can't alienate Mexicans. You can't alienate Latinos. You can't alienate blacks. You can't alienate journalists. You can't alienate scientists. You can't alienate Asians. You can't alienate... <laughs> you can't alienate Iowans. How stupid are you? He said. I doubt whether the political, the Republican Party will ever recover from this. But 2,000 years ago, there was another campaign. Jesus was on his way to be crowned Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Jesus hoped, as he had spent three and a half years campaigning, trying to convince people that he is worthy of their vote and their nomination to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he had done a tremendous job. And there it is, Palm Sunday, that Jesus says, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up to Jerusalem. I hope I win their vote. I wonder 
What was Jesus' platform while he campaigned? I, I, I want to believe, walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. I want to believe that Jesus would look at the crowd and says, you know, if you want to know who I am, I am really the true conservative. <laughs> I believe Jesus would say, I am the true conservative because I heard Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, that's a conservative view. No man comes to the Father but by me. I heard Jesus say, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. That's a conservative. I heard this same Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Yes, Jesus would say, I am the only true conservative. <coughs> but I heard Jesus also say, if anyone will draw the sword, will die by the sword. Jesus would say, I, 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 I am the true conservative. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus is the true conservative. I heard Jesus say, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Dig it out. For it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Jesus was the true conservative. I heard him say, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman, commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. A true conservative. But I, I, I believe that Jesus will also say, I'm not only a conservative, but I, I'm also the true progressive in the race. Uh, I heard Jesus say... Uh, the real progressive, the real liberal, I, I heard him say, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus, the progressive, says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lose, love those who love them. And if you do good to those who, who love you, what is it worth? And the, 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 listen to Jesus, the progressive. Whosoever wants to be first. Whew, don't preach my sermon. Don't preach it. 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 <laughs> Whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. That's a true progressive. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to even these little children. But Jesus was not only, did not only have a conservative platform. He did not only have a liberal or progressive platform. But I feel the burn. <laughs> he also had a socialist. Come on. <laughs> he also had a socialist platform. Uh, Bernie, uh, not Bernie, but Jesus Christ would say, <laughs> I, 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 am the, I, am the, I am the only true socialist in the game, in the race. Because I heard Jesus say one day, give to everyone <laughs> who begs from you. And of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that men would do to you, so also you should do unto them. He says, I'm the socialist. If you want to be perfect, go sell all of your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure. My gosh, you will have treasure in heaven. So in everything, do to others what you would have them to do, for this sums up the law and the prophets. But Jesus got in trouble. Because Jesus was the first official flip-flopper. 
<laughs> and I can see the disciples and the followers of Jesus saying to him, why don't you make your mind up? One day you are conservative. The other day you are a liberal. Another day you are a socialist. What are you? And this is why students of God's word must pause for a while to ask the question, what happened between Sunday and Friday? What happened in a triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem when, oh, oh by the way, Jesus was a Democrat. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the Republican animal is the elephant. And the Democratic animal is the donkey. And Jesus was going with his triumphal and he could find no other animal. He said to his disciples, go get me a donkey. <laughs> go get me a donkey, that, that steadfast animal. Go get me that donkey, that faithful animal. And Jesus is riding into Jerusalem. And they take their clothes and they take the palm and throw it on the ground. What happened? Between Sunday and Friday. I'll tell you what happened. There was another parade going on, going into Jerusalem. And it was a Roman parade. Pilate and his friends heard that a king was riding into Jerusalem. And they wanted to make sure that that king will never be crowned. And so there was on the west side of Jerusalem, there was another parade. There was another convention that was being held. The Roman soldiers were going up to Jerusalem to make sure the Jews don't make trouble. But on the, on the, on the, <laughs> this Jesus with his group, these guys who began to call him flip-floppers. They said, we don't know where you are sometimes. And he goes into the temple and he sees the money changers and he takes up the two by four and he begins to beat them. And as a matter of fact, he went so far as to say, destroy this temple, this temple and then I will rebuild it in three days. And the religious establishment began to say, we got to get rid of him. We got to stop Trump. No, not stop Trump. But that, that, that slipped out. <laughs> we got to stop Jesus. Oh, we got we to gotta stop Jesus. We got, you see, because, listen, we talk about the, 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 the death of Lazarus. And one of the things that you have to understand about the death of Lazarus was this whole idea that it took 14 days between the death of Lazarus and the crucifixion. Because the people had no explanation as to how Lazarus came out of that grave. They used to say, well, he concocted something. Well, the lame man wasn't really lame. But when you dead, when you D-E-D, -E you really dead. <laughs> and Lazarus was dead. Certifiably dead. And then that's when they got together and the, the religious leader says, we got to get rid of Jesus. That's, that's when they say we got to get rid of Jesus. And when all the religious establishment began to see that, thought that he was talking about that temple, and they turned against him, then the Romans moved in. And when the Romans moved in, they found out something. They found out even the people who love Jesus have turned against him. Even the religious establishment, they have turned against him. And Pilate and all the soldiers, they moved in and they... They took Jesus, that great kiss that Judas 
gave. But there is, there is something here that Pilate looked at the crowd and Pilate says, you know, we're going to forgive somebody. And the same religious establishment picked Barabbas over Jesus. How people can turn on each other. And Barabbas is set free. And Jesus is crucified. And crucified in a way that none of us would really want to leave this earth. Reminds me of the, the guy who was going to be crucified. And he says, I, 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 want, I want two people to come and be at my side. I want a lawyer. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I want a lawyer and an accountant. And they say, what are you going, why you want the lawyer and the accountant? He says, I just want to die between two thieves. <laughs> <laughs> and this I'm sorry girl I, 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 I'm so sorry but this story of the passion week must remind us all that Jesus was crucified because of the economic political and religious folk who colluded together. I know it's romantic and sentimental to say, oh, he came to die. I know that. It's easy. We like, we like that. We, oh, he came to die. But don't lose sight of those three powers that got together and colluded to kill Jesus. Because in our world, don't be so religious. Don't be so spiritual to think that they are not the religious, political, and spiritual powers that are trying to bring you down. Yeah, Don't lose sight of that. And they, they killed him. And there are some good things that happened in the death of Jesus. Oh, as he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. As he said, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. Oh. And then they didn't even have a tomb. And they borrowed the tomb from Joseph of Arimathea. And they buried him. And uh, everyone thought it was over. The powers thought that they had defeated Jesus once and for all and no, no more Jesus. But I heard, I heard the old preacher say uh, that when they laid Jesus in the tomb, the devil reminded the demons that uh, some folks are saying that they that they're going to steal the body of Jesus, but we ought to make sure that, that nobody steals the body of Jesus. And they tell me that Friday night, mm, mm, mm. Friday night, the devil looked at the tomb of Jesus and he made sure he looked in there and the devil says, he's there. They tell me it was about midnight on Friday. The devil went back to the same tomb and just to be reassured that nobody took the body of Jesus. And the devil says, he's there. Oh, Lord. And it was Saturday morning <laughs> that the devil looked again and he was sure that Jesus was there. Saturday evening, the devil looked and he, he says, oh, he's still there. But they tell me that sometime on Sunday night, 
or early, very early Sunday morning. The devil says, I don't know what really happened, but all I knew that I heard somebody say, he's not there, but he's alive. I heard the angel say, holy, 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 oh Lord, this Jesus. You see, but I'm getting ahead of myself. That's next week's sermon. Uh, hold on. Next week's sermon is entitled, The Rest of the Story. So make sure you're here. Joan, come on and sing, baby. The rest.